In one of my latest videos, it was requested that I cover the topic of bandwidth. To be exact, Wayne Davis 1099 said, any chance of you explaining bandwidth? You clearly know this stuff and make this subject easier than most do. I'm waiting with bated breath. Well, Wayne, today's your lucky day. In this episode from Network From Home, I'm gonna be going over the topic of bandwidth. I'll be explaining it at a very high level to make sure that everybody understands both the term and how it relates to your home network. I'll also be talking about some common misconceptions when it comes to bandwidth, so you wanna make sure you stick around for that as well. I have an analogy that I'll be walking you through today, and to do that, we're gonna to have to take a trip to Gigi's horse farm. Okay, so here we are, we've made it to Gigi's horse farm. To give a little background information here, Gigi is someone who loves horses, and she's thought about starting her own farm. In order to run a proper horse farm, there are a few things that Gigi needs to have in place first. First, she needs to have a horse, which she does here, as you can see in the lower left. But more importantly, she needs to be able to feed this horse. If she's going to be giving sleigh rides every day and offering this service to her customers, she needs to make sure that her horse is well fed so that way it can perform at a high level each and every day. So what does Gigi do? She buys hay from the hay farm down the street. As you can see here, she pays money to the hay farm in return for hay and they have a contract that they put in place. The hay farm says, hey, for this amount of money, I can make sure that you have 100 pounds of hay at your farm each and every day. This is perfect for Gigi because her horse, in giving its horse rides and its sleigh rides every day, the horse needs about 25 pounds of hay per day in order to sustain its high performance. As you can see right off the bat here, Gigi's getting 100 pounds of hay a day but her horse only requires 25 pounds of hay per day. So what does she do? She sees an opportunity to expand her business. So here she goes. Her first step is to get another horse. She now has two horses. She runs the same analysis. She now has two horses giving sleigh rides every day. She's making more money and she notices that she still has excess hay. She's using 50 pounds of hay per day, but has 100 pounds in total available. The next logical thing to do, she adds another horse to her fleet. She now has three horses giving sleigh rides every day, and she still has extra hay. Her three horses only consume 75 of the 100 pounds of hay that are delivered each and every day from the hay farm. The next logical thing to do, she adds another horse to her fleet. She is now using all of the hay that she gets delivered on a daily basis by the hay farm. Okay, business is booming. The word's getting out around town of how great Gigi's sleigh rides are. So she wants to go ahead and she wants to get another horse. She adds another horse to her fleet, but then she starts to run into some issues. She's getting delivered 100 pounds of hay per day, but between her five horses, they need 125 pounds of hay in order to maintain high performance. So what happens here? There's not enough hay to feed her five horses. Their performance starts to slip. Their sleigh rides get a lot slower. The customers start to notice. They say, this isn't exactly what I signed up for. And what happens is she starts to get some poor reviews for her business. Gigi realizes that this is not sustainable, so she has to make a decision. The first choice, or the first option that she has available to her, she can go ahead, she can buy another 100 pounds of hay per day. In doing so, she needs to change her contract with her hay provider. The hay farm down the street will require twice as much money if she wants 200 pounds of hay per day. The nice thing about this option though, is that it will allow her to expand her fleet further if there is continued demand for her sleigh rides. Okay, so that covers one option. What's the next option? The other option is to keep the amount of hay she's getting each and every day, but just get rid of that last horse. That way she has four horses that she can sustain with her daily hay delivery, 
and those four horses can operate at a high level each and every day. If this analogy doesn't make a ton of sense to you right now, that's okay because I'm going to explain how it relates to bandwidth. As you'll see, this is actually a pretty good analogy of how bandwidth plays a part in your home network. So let's get into that now. Okay, how does this relate to bandwidth? Let's take it back to the beginning of the example. Rather than having Gigi's horse farm, what do we have? We have your home where you access the internet, okay? What's next? Instead of the hay farm down the street, what do we have? We have your internet service provider. They're the ones that are providing the internet and the available bandwidth to your home. Speaking of internet access and bandwidth, what does the hay and the hay bales represent in this analogy? Well, that's the bandwidth in the internet access that I'm talking about. And rather than using 100 pounds of hay per day, we use 100 megabits per second. 100 megabits per second is a measure of bandwidth it means that you have 100 megabits of data available to you each and every second. Okay, the last piece here to tie it together, I'm sure you can make this jump here. Rather than horses, what do we have? We have devices in your home network. Okay, so in using this bandwidth analogy, it's the same concept as the horse farm. If you have one laptop that needs 25 megabits per second in order to operate, you have plenty of available bandwidth with a 100 megabits per second internet plan. Similar to the horse farm analogy, you have a contract with your internet service provider, you pay your internet service provider on a monthly basis, and they provide you with a maximum potential bandwidth for your home internet connection. Okay, so let's follow the same example here. You have one device in your home network, it requires 25 megabits per second, if you have a plan that provides 100 megabits per second, you have plenty of available bandwidth here. And as you see, we start to add devices. You add a second device that requires 25 megabits per second. You still have plenty of bandwidth available. Same thing if we add a third device. You still have available bandwidth and all of your three devices have exactly what they need. They can all operate at a high level on a consistent basis. The same applies if we add a fourth device. Now you're using all of your available bandwidth. All of your devices can operate at the highest possible level because they have all the bandwidth they need in order to complete their functions. However, once you add a fifth device, this is where you run into problems. Just like Gigi in her house farm, when she got a fifth horse, she didn't have enough hay to feed them all. And what happened as a result? their performance suffered. The same thing applies in your home network. If your devices require more bandwidth than you're providing it with your internet plan, your devices will start to slow down. Your network performance will degrade, and I guarantee you, you'll notice the poor performance. I'm sure this has happened to a lot of us before. If we have too many people trying to use the internet at once, and our internet plan doesn't provide us with enough bandwidth to support all those devices accessing the internet, you get lag, you get buffering problems, all of these things that we've seen before in our home internet experiences. All right, so let's jump back to the analogy. What do you do in this scenario if you have devices that require more bandwidth than your internet plan provides? Well, option one, you can pay more money to your internet service provider and you can upgrade your internet plan. In this case, we're going from 100 megabits per second to 200 megabits per second. 200 megabits per second can easily support the five devices here and you also have the opportunity to add more devices without running into any network issues. Of course, the other option here, you can go ahead and remove one of those devices. If you ensure that only four of these devices are using the internet at a given time, you should be just fine. Okay, jumping back to this previous option here where you're upgrading your internet plan to support additional devices on your home network, this often comes with a common misconception. People refer to bandwidth as quote unquote internet speed. And the common misconception is that the 
more bandwidth you get from your internet plan, the faster your individual devices will function. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So let's say I go here and I upgrade this internet plan to 600 megabits per second. Well, this doesn't change anything about the bandwidth that these devices need in order to perform at a high level. So having 600 megabits per second of bandwidth available, that doesn't really help me in this case because amongst these five devices, I only need 125 megabits per second of bandwidth. This extra 475 megabits per second of available bandwidth is just wasted in this case. And what people end up doing, they end up paying exorbitant amounts of money for these high speed internet plans. In other words, internet plans with a lot of available bandwidth and they expect their devices to operate faster as a result. But the fact remains, bandwidth isn't so much internet speed as it's available data at a given point in time. That's the one thing I wanna to stress to you all today. Understand that you only need enough bandwidth to support your devices. Buying extra bandwidth and an expensive internet plan is not going to speed up the performance of the devices on your home network. Okay, so hopefully that analogy made sense to you in helping you understand what bandwidth is and how it impacts your home network. I should also mention that this is the first time that I've done this. This is the first time that I've featured a comment and made content based upon what's been requested. I'd love to get your feedback on if you think this analogy is a good one. If you think it's trash, let me know. If I just made things more confusing, I'd like to hear about it so maybe I can make changes in the future. If you liked this video, on the other hand, please give it a like. We want to make sure that this gets shared with other people who might not have a great understanding of bandwidth and maybe they're paying a lot of extra money for an internet plan that provides them with bandwidth that they don't even need. Another request I have is if you like this content, if you find it useful or entertaining, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be making similar content like this moving forward and I'm sure there will be other things that you find useful as well. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home. We'll catch you on the next one.